Okay, so just as time ran out on the last video, we were doing example one, which wanted us to find the force of friction that must be uh, being exerted on the box as you try to push this box with the force of 20 newtons, and the box is at rest. Okay, so you're pushing at the box, uh, trying to get the box to move. And so our first step was to do some of the forces in the y direction. Well, actually, our first step was to draw in all the forces. Then our second step was to do some of the forces in the y direction to find our Fn. And whenever there's friction, that's going to be where we'll always start. Some of the forces in the y to find Fn. If there's no friction, then really we won't care about the y because the reason we care about the y is to get the Fn so that then we can go to the friction equation and use that Fn. So we got our Fn, we went to the friction equation, and we found friction to be 29.43 newtons. But the question said that the box wasn't moving. So there's no way that the friction can really be 29.43 newtons, because if it is, then the box would move. And it would move because of friction. So this is the maximum. Remember we talked about this before. So this is the max static friction. But in this particular case, the static friction that would be acting on this box would be 20 newtons just enough to keep it from moving because I'm pushing the 20. Okay, so that's the final answer. All right, while we were uploading, I found a blank exam uh, example sheet, so we can do example two right here. So it says you push with the force of 200 newtons on a 50 kilogram crate. So it, as you do this with me on your in your notes, and you can always pause me, right? So you're going to draw a level surface and a box and put 50 kilograms inside the box and you're pushing with a force of 200 newtons. So this F is 200 newtons. So you're pushing with a force of 50, 200 newtons on a 50 kilogram crate and are able to get the crate to just begin to move what must be the coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor. All right. So draw in your other forces. There's gravity acting down and the normal force acting up and then friction will be going this way. Now when it says just begin to move, it means you're at the spot where you're about to overcome static friction. So what you're going to be finding here is going to be mu static. Okay, so a few minutes ago in example one I said whenever there's friction start with the sum of the forces in the y direction. So start with some of the forces in the y direction. Is this crate moving in the y? No, it's a 50 kilogram crate. It's sitting on a floor. It's not going to float into the air and certainly not breaking through the floor. So this side will be zero. And what are these forces that are acting in the y direction? Well, there's Fn and there's Fg. So where the sum of the forces is, that's where you write, you list your forces. Then you have to pause and say, which way am I going to call positive? Let's call up positive, so Fn will be positive, Fg will be negative, equal to zero. So Fn will equal Fg, and we know Fg is Mg. So Fn will equal 50 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And so Fn will equal 490.5 newtons. Okay? So we have our Fn. Now we're looking for mu, and we know that FFr is equal to mu Fn. So if we could find FFr, if we could find the frictional force, then we can get our mu. So first step, some of the forces in the y direction. Then second step, Let's do sum of the forces in the x direction, equal to mAx. It says just begin to move, and whenever it says just begin to move, it means it isn't actually moving yet, so there's no actual acceleration in the x direction yet. What are our forces acting in the x direction? So in place of the sum of the forces, you're going to write the F you're pushing with and friction, because those are the two forces acting in the x direction. We always call direction of motion positive, so uh, the F will be positive and friction will be negative. Take friction over to the other side, so friction is equal to the F is equal to 200 newtons. 
Now that we have friction and we have Fn, we can come up here in step 3 and rearrange for mu. So friction divided by Fn. So 200 newtons divided by 490.5 newtons. Do the math and you get a mu of 0 0.4. 4.0775. Notice there are no units because they cancel. Now remember the coefficients are tiny, so please don't round this to just 0.4. Right? If you look at the question, 5 sig figs, 4 sig figs, so you got to keep more than just one sig fig down here. Okay? So that's example 2. Both of those are static friction. It's time to get more exciting. It's time to move and go to kinetic friction. So the first example in kinetic friction says a horizontal force of 90 newtons is required to pull a child on a sleigh at a constant speed over dry snow. All right, so dry your picture, and it says it's a horizontal force. So draw a straight line parallel to the ground, and that's your force, 90 newtons. Um, the child in the slit of a combined mass of 60 kilograms, so put that in here, Calculate the coefficient of friction. All right, so draw in the rest of your forces. Gravity acting down, normal force acting up. Friction is going to be opposing you. And there's a key set of words here. Constant speed. Constant speed means Ax is zero. Okay, and it wants you to find the coefficient of friction. So again, start with some of the forces in the y direction. So like I said of twice already in this video, always some of the forces in the y direction if there's friction. Okay, this sleigh and this child, unfortunately for the child, is not moving in the y. It'd be kind of cool if it was a magic carpet, but it isn't. And so in the y, we have Fn minus Fg is equal to zero. So Fn is equal to Fg is equal to Mg. So Fn is equal to 60 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And I'm sure you're saying, okay, this is getting old. It's the same. It won't always be that Fn is equal to Fg, okay? But I want you to get used to the steps. So that's why, I, like right now, it is. But I promise by tomorrow's videos, it won't be. All right, so Fn, when you multiply out, is 588.6 newtons. All right, we're looking for mu, and so we could find mu from FFR is equal to mu Fn. So mu will be equal to the frictional force divided by Fn. We have Fn, but we don't have friction. So we can find friction just like we did in the last question by doing some of the forces in the x is equal to max. Remember it said constant speed, so Ax is zero. What are the forces in the x? There's the F and there's friction equal to zero. And let's call direction of motion positive. Please always do. So F will be equal to friction, will be equal to 90 newtons. And I promise the next one this won't be the same. It will give you an A. All right, so then it's 90 newtons on the top over 588.6 newtons on the bottom. Do the math and get 0 0.15291 as your answer. Okay? All right, one more maybe before the time runs out. It's a 25 kilogram box being pushed across the floor with a horizontal force of 180 newtons. So F equals 180 newtons. Coefficient of friction, so there's friction acting back. I'm probably going to run out of time here. Fg acting down, Fn acting up. It's okay. Your homework tonight you won't need. It's all, you won't need this one, I don't think. Um, I think they're all at constant speed. And so it says the coefficient is 0 0.422, and it wants to know what is A, the acceleration in the x. So have you noticed three steps? Some of the forces in the y, some of the forces in the x, and then friction. Sometimes y always leads. Uh, which one you go do next, the x or the coefficient, depends on what you're given. Okay? So for homework tonight, I'll come back and finish this one tomorrow. For homework tonight, on page uh, 144, 1 to 5, please.